So in chapter 18 for business law, we looked um, at ways to discharge a contract. Up until this point, we looked at uh, the elements needed to create a valid contract, but now we're looking at uh, the different categories that um, are needed to discharge a contract. So the first one we have is discharge by performance. Um, this is something I'll get into talking about later, but we also have um, discharge by agreement, which again, I will get into uh, talking about later. Um, we also have discharge uh, by operation of law. Um, that's another one which I will again get into about later. And then there's also other ones such as like the impossibility of performance, uh, the time lapse, stuff like that. But the main ones are those. Um, so explain in detail the following concept. So what are types of conditions? Um, so there are different types of conditions when it comes to uh, contracts. There are um, three main types of conditions, but a condition is a qualification in a contract based on a possible future event. So there are three types of conditions. You have your precedent conditions, subsequent conditions, and concurrent uh, conditions. Um, so your precedent conditions, condition that must be fulfilled before a party's performance can be required, um, requires absolute duty to perform. Um, subsequent conditions is when uh, a condition uh, operates to terminate a party's absolute promise to perform after the time of absolute performance was due. Uh, condition, subsequent conditions are rare. Um, and then next we have um, concurrent conditions when each party's uh, performance is conditioned on the party's performance or tender. Uh, both parties required to perform their duties simultaneously. So those are the three different types of conditions. Um, you also have express and complied conditions. Um, but uh, those are the types of conditions. Um, so how performance impacts the ability to discharge a contract. So performance is another way you can discharge a contract, like what I said before. Um, so both parties must fulfill their respective duties by performing the acts they have promised. So you're, that's all what a contract is about. You're going to make a promise, and then you must fulfill those duties. Um, you have things such as complete performance, and this is when the agreements, um, the parties perform their agreements exactly how they're supposed to do uh, perfectly or whatnot. Um, all the conditions are satisfied. Um, you know, they're stated in the contract and therefore they are done the way they were supposed to be done. Um, you have substantial performance. So a party in good faith that performs substantially all of the terms uh, can enforce the contract. So, you know, uh, like the main thing here is a uh, party is in good faith. Um, uh, most of the benefits are promised and um, you, they did what they could. Um, performance must not vary greatly from what was promised so they did the majority and um, even though it might not be complete but it's like most most part there um, again must be in good faith performance must not vary greatly from the performance promised in the contract so if there's a big difference from what you promised and what you um, gave um, if there's not a big difference then that's substantial performance. If there's a big difference, then that's something that's not okay. You didn't hold up your side. Um, so the courts will end up deciding whether or not the performance was substantial on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, uh, effect on duty to perform the part. The parties must continue performing under the contract. Um, so that's basically how uh, performance affects the ability to discharge a contract. If it's completely done, all everything's satisfied, then you're good. Um, if it's done in good faith and it's very close to almost being completely satisfied, uh, courts will decide, and if they do, then, you know, uh, then you're good. So, uh, next one is uh, breach of contract, material, and minor. Um, so when it comes to breach of contract, you have material versus a minor breach. 
If the breach is minor, not material, the non-breaching party's duty to perform uh, may be suspended until the breach has been uh, remedied. Um, breach of material breach of contract is when performance is not substantial, so there wasn't enough done to be considered uh, good enough or in good faith or whatnot. Um, material breach of contract, again, once the party, uh, once the minor breach is cured, non-breaching party must resume performance of contractual obligations. Um, so those basically are the different types of the uh, material and the minor um, sort of uh, breach of contracts. Um, types of agreements that discharge contracts. Um, so uh, there are different types of agreements that discharge contracts, um, discharged by mutual recession, recession. Parties must make another agreement that also satisfies the legal, legal requirements of a contract. Um, there must be an offer and an acceptance um, and consideration when it comes to making that new uh, agreement or that other agreement. Um, most of them is done uh, enforceable even if it's done orally. Um, so written or orally, it's still um, uh, enforceable. Um, so we have discharge by mutual rescission. Um, contracts must be in writing. Um, then we have discharge by novation, uh, substitution of a new third party for one of the original parties. There are requirements for this, however, previous valid obligation agreement by all parties. So all parties must be in on that. Um, can't just have one or two parties that are in on it. All three have to be in um, extinguishment of all obligation of all old obligations, and a new valid contract must be done. Um, next, we have discharge by settlement agreement, a compromise that arises out of a genuine dispute over the obligations under an existing contract will be recognized at law. Um, then we have dis discharge by uh, accord and satisfaction, so accord. Uh, contract to perform existing contractual duty, not yet discharged, um, satisfaction, performance of an accord. So once the accord has been made, the original obligation is only suspended until the accord agreement is fully performed. Next we have uh, what is discharged by operation of law. So there are different methods when it comes to this. Um, you have your material altercation, statute of limitations, and bankruptcy. Um, and then there's also impossibility of performance too. Um, so material altercation, alteration is innocent party is discharged after material alteration of contract of terms, uh, statute of limitations, we've talked about this before, um, a suit for breach of contract must be filed within the time permitted by applicable law. Uh, bankruptcy, a discharge in bankruptcy usually prevents creditors from enforcing most of the uh, debtor's contracts and impossibility of performance is uh, superventing events may make performance objectively impossible. Um, it only applies if the event was not foreseeable by any of the parties. So if something out of the blue came up um, and none of the parties saw coming, um, this can lead to something like impossibility of performance. Um, it literally can't be done um, and not something that, oh, I can't do it. Um, if it's something that you, you say you can't do it, well, you made that promise. But if it legitimately cannot be done, um, then that's impossibility of performance. Um, there's different examples for when, uh, when a performance is impossible. Um, one party to a personal contract dies um, uh, or becomes in, in cap, incapacitated. I don't know that word. Um, so someone dies or something like that. Um, or even something that like recently happened, like something like COVID, something crazy like that. Uh, it can put things, drive things to a halt, and then all of a sudden, you know, things can't get done. So you're going to uh, have to either create a new contract or put a greater time limit on that. Um, or when a change in law renders performance illegal, which does happen. So say you're going to do something, 
Um, the biggest thing is, in my easiest thing to think of is like climate change. So say you made an agreement to produce so many um, uh, items and uh, then there's a new law that comes out that you can only put out so much CO2 emissions, but the number of items require uh, more than the new law of CO2 emissions. So now it physically can't be done because of uh, the new law that will make that illegal. So that's another thing. Um, performance can be delayed or discharged uh, depending on the situation. Um, so basically, uh, that is everything that it comes down to for chapter 18.